Hello from the floor of the 2019 Android Dev Summit and welcome back to today's final session of the hashtag Ask Android Livestream. I'm Dan Galpin and this is my co-host Lila Fujiwara. Once again, we're here to ask experts, experts questions that have been tweeted to hashtag Ask Android or asked in the live chat. And those uh, experts, experts. <laughs> those experts are Chris Baines and Fred Chung uh, for your question asking pleasure. So uh, Chris and Fred are both Android developer advocates with Chris leading advocacy around the system uh, UI changes in Android, such as dark mode, which I have a pin for up here, <laughs> uh, gesture nav. Uh, on the other hand, Fred focuses on privacy changes and China developer outreach in general. Welcome, Chris and Fred. All right, so first question for both of you, what is your favorite feature in Android 10? Uh, I'm going to go with Thermo API. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's an API that um, on supported devices, if it gets too hot, it's an it's an avenue for the for the OS to tell the app that hey, I'm too hot. Don't run high performance stuff on me. Let me cool down. All right, yep. that's, a, that's a great session for game devs. That's yeah, gonna be yeah awesome. totally. So I think for me, it's the headline feature of Dart Theme. Like we've tried to land this feature now for about <laughs> four years. Every time, like it'll go to a developer option, it'll be taken away. We finally got it landed. So yeah, for me, Dart Theme. Dark Theme. All right. So speaking of Dark Theme, um, Kim C nine two nine asks, uh, how to determine the Dark Theme system enable? I need to get it to change the icon color of uh, notification actions because Notification Compat doesn't support uh, changing the background of custom notification with Remote View automatically. Um, yeah, I mean, with notifications, it's the same process you have for normal views. Um, so Dart Theme is a configuration change. Um, so if you're using values-night to be able to vary those resources, those drawables, um, the resources system will work automatically with notifications. It should just all work. Um, it's a little bit different with custom layouts and notifications. But as long as you're using uh, the dash night resource qualifier, it should all work. All right. All right. Excellent. All right, so um, let's see. This is an interesting. Kenneth L171 asked, hashtag Ask Android, with Jetpack, Security Lib, and the Android X Biometric Prompt Lib, will Google put more emphasis in making use of the Android key store provider? And also making sure that OEMs don't break that functionality. Yeah, I can take this one. I sure. think in, in general, we are trying to uh, improve the performance of, of key store providers. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we like to, you know, over time, add more and more features to the Android security library. Yeah, well, and, and, I mean, the Titan security key is actually like, a, I mean, security uh, chip is actually like a really big selling point yeah. for our devices. And I know for a lot of other OEMs, there is a very similar kind of uh, you know, focus on, on both privacy and security. Right, yeah. And we are obviously working very closely with different OEMs mm -hmm. to make that uh, support more efficient. OK, so from Twitter, uh, this is a combination of letters and numbers. So <laughs> BJ20XY uh, asks, uh, hey, Android team, is it OK to exclude from the gesture areas, uh, is it OK to exclude from the gesture areas the sides of your carousels? There are many apps out there uh, doing so already. Um, carousels are a little bit of a weird one. So it depends on how you're using them. Um, we allow uh, the gesture exclusion APIs, uh, but so they allow you to exclude parts of the gesture zones and your app takes precedence. Um, the problem is that we have limits on them, so you can only limit up to 200 dips per edge. Um, carousels tend to be quite tall, um, and so it depends on what the content is. If it's the, like, the primary use case of your UI, then it's probably OK. Um, but if you tend to have large lists of them, say, for instance, Play Store, which is a similar UI, um, it's probably not OK. We kind of feel that users will get used to where they swipe, whereas in the middle of the screen. The actual edges for uh, the back gesture is like 24 dips wide, so it's not a huge area. And it, we think users will just get used to it, basically. Yeah. yeah, I've certainly seen that in my own usage. Uh, OK, let's see. What, what do we have next? Ah, so when uh, Colin White asks, when implementing dark mode, what's the recommendation around using uh, dark gray backgrounds versus true black backgrounds? Dark gray versus black. Um, you might have credit Tom for <laughs> the question. So the material <laughs> guidelines have a um, recommendation of using dark gray. Uh, and that is because you still get the benefits of battery saving and also a darker theme, mm -hmm. um, but it's not, it don't have that harshness that black backgrounds give. Mm -hmm. um, the reasons why the Pixel um, OS has black is to maximum battery saving. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the primary reason why it does it. Um, apps don't really have that um, issue, so therefore they can use a, a, light, a darker gray. Uh, gives less of a harshness, and it tends to be better visually. All right. Okay. So uh, we had a couple of questions about IMEI, uh, so I'm going to just ask one of these. Uh, Felipe C, a bunch of numbers, <laughs> asks, uh, hi, uh, how can I get the uh, IMEI number in Android 10? 
Yeah, and we, we, had, we had a couple, you know, another, yeah. another company was providing smartphone insurance and they, you know, they want to get the IMEI number. Well, um, as people are probably aware in Android 10, we started imposing the, the restrictions for, develop, for developers and apps in general to retrieve what we call non-resettable hardware identifiers for privacy reasons. But, um, so I think for apps, it really depends on the use cases. Uh, if you wanted to, for example, track um, uh, daily active users and so forth, you can use UUID, which is currently available in the framework. Uh, or if you want to track cross-app uh, installation or in uninstallation attribution, for example, you can use uh, secure setting uh, SSA, SSA ID, secure setting Android ID, mm. long name, but uh, <laughs> it's available in the framework. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask, can you talk a little bit more about why these changes were made or? Uh... Yeah, yeah, so uh, like I said, it, the motivation for imposing these restrictions is to uh, improve user privacy mm -hmm. because we don't necessarily want application owners or developers to get a hold of the user's hardware identif identifier, which are largely not resettable, because mm -hmm. those, are, those are rather permanent. So we wanted to uh, move towards the sort of the mobile industry standard, where mm -hmm. different mobile OSs in general have adopted that practice, so that uh, we wanted to move the ecosystem forward to become more privacy friendly. Yeah. So um, uh, Cario VMF asks, if a user sets a foreground service notification to show silently and minimize, can the service keep running indefinitely? Uh, yes, they can. <laughs> Simple answer. Uh, so yeah, it, it's up to the user what they do with that notification. Um, yeah. If they want to turn the app to be silent and minimized, that's their choice, and then you know yeah. it's up to them. Yeah, in some cases, I, I would say um, if the application developer has chosen to add user controls to the notification, then the user in those in those scenarios uh, won't be able to stop the foreground services, for example. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do this one here. Okay. So uh, Texta. <laughs> and a bunch of numbers, asks, um, could a new app I build inherit a dark theme from Android, that is, in the styles? Is there a style created which could make my whole app uh, dark theme automatically? So yeah, we have um, the day-night variant of themes. So AppCompat added this a number of years ago. Um, <laughs> so yeah, if you're using AppCompat, you already have this feature in there, and we call it day-night. Um, so yeah, look at the APIs. We've had a number of blog posts over the years, so look at it. So one last quick question, what happened to Bubbles? Um, we weren't quite happy with where it landed. Um, bubbles in terms of um, the way apps could use it. Um, mm -hmm. So we made it into a developer option, um, and that allows apps to actually still play with the APIs and get it working. Mm -hmm. um, but we're not quite sure how it's going to play yet. All right. uh, it may come back in another um, Android version, but we're not quite sure yet. All right, well, thank hey. you so much. So with that, unfortunately, we're almost just out of time. Uh, but before we leave Chris and Fred, uh, if folks want to learn more about any of these Android 10 features that you're talking about, where should they go? Um, developer.android.com <laughs> slash privacy. <laughs> uh, so for me, Jish and Nav, uh, we've released a number of articles on Medium um, day not, and Dark Theme as well. There's a number of articles. So yeah, look on Medium. Yep. All right. So follow, our, follow us on Medium. Android developers on Medium. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, and thank all of you for joining us from around the world for this very first Ask Android live stream. This concludes today's broadcast. We'll be back here tomorrow for another edition of Hashtag Ask Android starting at 11.55 a.m. PST. Uh, and for me as well, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, do keep tweeting us your questions with the hashtag AskAndroid hashtag. <laughs> and if you want a deeper dive, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the Android Developers YouTube channel.